What's going on everybody? This is Future Automation, a place where imagination meets reality and you are listening to Tejas. So guys, in this video, going to take, we are going to take a look at how to use 4x4 matrix keypad and I have created a simple password validation kind of code as well for fun. So we'll take a look at that as well with a cup of coffee. Let's get started. So guys, in previous video, we have seen how we can use DHT11 sensor and push data to ThinkSpeak platform, although the code was not explained fully, but I am going to create a video for that code explanation as well. That part is the latter part of Arduino where we are going to learn how to use serial data, pass it to Python and then use that data to do something else. So that's kind of a cool thing and we are going to take a look at that as well. So now moving on. First, let's, let us to take a look at the working principle of this 4x4 matrix. Then we'll take a look at the actual hardware and then we'll take a look at the code. So this is the internal structure of how the 4x4 keypad is made. Now here you can see that there are four rows and then there are four columns. So that's why it is called 4x4 matrix now in some keypads we have this column removed the rightmost which is then called as four by three because four rows and three columns so a b c d and the last one a b c d last column is uh, not present in that so moving on the way this particular matrix work is the 4x4 matrix has 16 inbuilt push buttons. Now you can see these are the push buttons which when pushed completes a specific circuit and based on the number of rows and columns which are mapped to this particular uh, structure, we get the actual key. So that is how it works. And this is helped with the library that we are going to use which is keypad.h so if you have not downloaded it do download it if you are not aware of the basics of how we can use the arduino id you can go ahead and watch the previous initial videos where i have created that kind of content and i'll leave the link in the description so that you don't have to worry about going and searching so the way it works is say for example if i have pressed this particular button so what the microcontroller will understand based on the map that character map that we provide to it is that first row and first column circuit has got completed that means internally we'll get an output of one similar for two we'll get two for three we'll get three and the list goes on so that's how it is now where we can use these kind of modules one is we can use it to a password lock password lock kind of project which we are going to cover in future videos when i'm going to use and explain you how to use selenite lock so at that point we can use it we can use it to create a micro pad that's another way to do it so i am going to create a micro pad using this module uh, but not now in future videos i have already designed the micro pad just for fun so i will add the description i'll add the link in the description for that video so you can go ahead and check it in fusion 360 i have in fusion 360 i have created that keypad so that's another thing now moving on to the code so the working principle is done the de design is done there's one more thing that is still left and let me just bring up the hardware so today we are having two things that is keypad and then we are having another one thing that is arduino without which it is impossible so we have a few jumper cables as well now the way this is created is the first four pins that is the leftmost four pins are actually the row and the rightmost four pins are the column so we have to connect it in accordingly now let's connect 
the connection and then we'll move on to the code so that I can explain you how the code works. Okay guys, so connection is completed. Now let me quickly show you how I have connected it. So all the rows are connected to 98765, 9876, and then all the columns are connected to 5432. So that is how simple the connection is. Now moving on to the code. So the first code is basically detecting keys. So which key we are pressing, that is what I am going to do. And you make sure that don't jump directly to the second code because you need to understand what is the <laughs> what is the basics of this library how exactly the key mapping and how the get character get key works and then only you can build projects with it so first is we'll include the keypad.s library and then we'll define the structure that is layout of the keyboard that is four by four if we have four by three then instead of columns at four we'll de define it as a three now moving on we'll create a key map that's what i was talking about so we'll create the layout of this keypad so one two three a and you have seen already how the keypad is so that is four five six b seven eight nine c and then hash zero sorry star zero hash d and then what we'll do is we'll tell the we'll create another one another two libraries uh, sorry and then what we'll do we'll create another two uh, variables one will consist of rows and one will consist of columns so four rows nine eight seven six and four columns five four three two now everything is ready now what we need to do is we need to add all this to keypad function to let it know what exactly is the configuration so here make key map is another function where we'll be passing this particular key maps and then we'll pass number of rows number of columns the pins to which rows are connected and the pins to which columns are connected now all together it will help the library to understand which key is being pressed and we'll create an instance out of it and then moving on we'll do a quick serial begin at 9600 and then in loop is where we are doing the main thing so keypad.get key will return you the key that is being pressed you need to display that key or perform any kind of function that you want to do now we'll pull up the serial monitor and we'll burn the code and see how it works so i'll connect arduino here and then i'll burn the code Okay, so code is burned now. Let's see if the key press is getting detected correctly. 1, 2, 3, A, 4, 5, 6, B. Then we have 7, 8, 9, C, hash, star, 0, hash, D. If we'll go in a different way, A, 6, 8, star, 0, 8, 5, 2. So it doesn't matter how you are pressing it. It will always detect the right key. And that's about it for the basics. If you have any confusion, you can put it in the comment section. I'll surely uh, response to you. I'll surely give you a response. And if you create any project, make sure you add your Git link in the comment section. I'll surely try to show it and give you a shout out in the next video.
moving on next so this is the password lock project and here also i'm going to explain you the code in a bit so the first section of the code is what we have done in the previous code also setting up the basic configurations next to that we'll create three different variables again one is with the correct password and we'll add the correct password now we are doing a four digit password you can extend it and add the extended value here that is if you are increasing one more you can add six like that then similar uh, size of character array we are going to create here for entered password then we'll define a position variable which will track the amount of digits that we have entered a quick serial begin and then the actual code starts so in loop we are getting the key and based on the key pressed here we are going to decide what's our next plan so we'll print the key that is pressed and then we'll start checking it so if we are having the hash pressed here so what we'll do we'll first uh, terminate the null value for the entered password and if not we'll move ahead and we'll compare the entered password with the correct password now if the entered password with the correct password is matched it will return zero and we'll print password correct or else we'll print password incorrect and then we'll reset the position to zero for next inputs then we'll do a mm set functionality what it will do is it will basically set the size characters that is all the characters of this particular size that is the entered password size to zero and then for star symbol that is asterisk symbol if we are pressing asterisk symbol it will reset the position to zero and reset the value of the entered password and it will print password reset if the value of the entered digit that is position is less than four it will keep on adding the password to the array and increment the position to one and if it exceeds the four it will show you a message password length exceeded please press asterisk to reset the password so it's that simple there's not much of a rocket science in that so let's clear the serial monitor and burn the password code and see if it works so we should always start with the positive thing and i'm going to enter the right password first so key press one key press two key press three key press four now we have entered four digits what we need to do to validate the password is press hash so what it will do is it will check the password and it will respond you password is correct now the entered password variable is uh, reset to zero so we'll uh, try with another incorrect password so three two one four and then hash incorrect password try again now we'll exceed the length or we'll try with the hash again so incorrect password try again so it will be it will check and it will reset again so next to that we'll exceed the length so one two three four five it will tell you password length exceeded press star to reset so if we'll press star again the password will get reset so that's it guys that's the password reset the four by four matrix and not much of anything left for us so if you like the video make sure you hit the subscribe button if you are new if you have any kind of queries for this particular video or any video as a matter of fact add comment i'll surely respond and the code for this particular uh, module 4x4 matrix both the codes are in the git so i'll leave the link of that also in the description we have completed our first live stream uh, with co-founders of toy stack go ahead and check that video as well it's a great live stream we enjoyed a lot there was a demo of how to use it so you'll get an hands-on idea on that as well so for link for that also is in the description and if you like the video make sure you hit the like button add comments if you are new again subscribe to my channel if you and if you're old make sure you share the video to iot enthusiast and keep innovating guys thank you take care